Hey guys, my name is Ismaus and today we're going to be looking at doing some procedural uh, texturing or match shaders using our cycles and Blender 2.8. So yeah, I've got, I just got a new PC uh, that is much more powerful than the previous computer I've been using. Uh, that is going to be enabling me to do more uh, cycles tutorials because previously I couldn't do that while screen recording. Uh, so yeah, we, you're going to be seeing more uh, cycles tutorials, especially procedural uh, shader tutorials. So yeah, let's dive in and uh, get started. So today what we're going to be doing is uh, just talk about a few tips uh, uh, for anyone who wants to get into Procedure sh Shaders, how to uh, set up your workspace and uh, uh, get some some of the basic tips uh, that you should have uh, when working. So the first thing I usually want to do uh, when I'm setting up my workflow, I usually subdivide this in this way. Uh, again, to just subdivide your window, you just have to move your cursor up here until you get this highlight. Uh, your cursor change and uh, do that. A lot of steps you should already know, I believe. But uh, yeah, so uh, I usually have this preview window, and uh, what I usually want to do is I don't because I'm not going to be using any of these tools. I just hide them. For example, this toolbar you can just hit T to hide that, and then this navigation uh, bar you can just click on this icon to hide that. And uh, these words here you just turn off all the overlays are like that, and now you can you're able to just have uh, this preview window. Yeah, so that's the most basic setup, but uh, let's get into some uh, great stuff. So uh, if uh, we use, if we add a new material and say we add a noise texture, because this is mostly where our uh, procedures textures uh, start from. Uh, so not always, but uh, yeah, for the most part. But uh, yeah, so if we preview this, again, I'm using the shortcut Control Shift and then clicking the node to preview that node. And uh, if you hold on Control Shift and click this twice or more than twice, it just toggles between uh, the output, the outputs you have there. So if say we have a geometry node, uh, only, this only, also only works if you're using the node wrangler add-on enabled, while well, it's enabled, so make sure to enable that. So if I wanted to toggle through all these output views, I just hold on Control Shift and then click on the node uh, to toggle through all of those uh, but uh, that's not what I want to talk about. So uh, I'm sure most of you already know uh, the control, control T, a shortcut uh, from the Node Wrangler, which just enables you to add in these texture coordinate mappings. Again, this is not the purpose. This is not what you're going to be talking about, but uh, something related to that. Uh, so you know that uh, the location helps you change the location of the uh, noise, or have rotation and uh, scale. So you, you're not only limited to this, if you wanted to control the positioning and uh, rotation of uh, your uh, nodes, uh, but since we are talking about the noise texture, so you're not only limited to the mapping node, if you wanted to control rotation, uh, sorry, location, rotation, and scale, you can also use other nodes. For example, if I use texture gradient, I can control the same things using this. So if I fit this directly into the, uh, the vector, of the noise map, you can see how it affects uh, this here. And uh, to better see how this is affecting this, we can fit this into the scale so that we're only seeing that. And uh, maybe to amplify the, the effects of this uh, node, uh, we can add a math node and uh, maybe change the operation to power uh, so that we can amplify the results. You can see how the how the noise looks, how the gradient looks, and how it's affecting. Uh, the noise as well. And maybe let me also add a power node here so that we can add some contrast, introduce some contrast in our results. So if I add a math node here, change the operation to power, bring this up, you can see the results of this, how this are, how this is affect, changing this, this here is affecting our noise. So if we preview this, you can see what is going on here. So we're using this gradient to control the scale of the vector noise. And uh, you can see, basically. So you might be wondering where this might be useful. And uh, let me just give you an, a quick example. So uh, there is something called anisotropic shaders, uh, which kind of creates this brush metal uh, look. Uh, you can use something like this uh, to create uh, a shader like that. And uh, the way you can do that is that uh, you can see in these uh, examples, in these examples, uh, the noise is creating this spherical 
uh, I don't know, reflections. So to do that, we can change the gradient from a linear type to a, a spherical type. And now if we fit this directly into uh, the roughness, preview this for a second, then maybe give this a metallic value. And uh, instead of using the scale, let's just affect the vector entirely. You can see we get that brush effect. And now this becomes even more pronounced if we turn on the anisotropic shader, uh, which is supposed to give you uh, these results, but uh, you don't really get those round brushes uh, to be more precise. And uh, the problem here is that uh, our noise is, is not centered and uh, others that can be changed by adding some texture coordinate mapping and just moving uh, the location of uh, the noise directly but uh, it might it's just a lot of guessing here if you do it like that that's why i usually like to change let me make sure this is recording that's why i usually like to change this to uv texture coordinate mapping uh, because then i i know that uh, if i have a uv map like this uh, the location of this circle, uh, or from just previewing uh, the gradient, at uh, the center of this circle coincide, uh, coincides uh, with uh, this left uh, bottom corner of the UV. So the center of the circle is positioned here. So I can move this, or I can just move the UV uh, so that the center of the UV island is at the center there. And uh, then if I scale this up, then uh, this circle will be in the center, which will influence our noise, which will, which is influencing our roughness to give us that's nice, that nice uh, kind of anisotropic uh, look uh, that uh, uh, you might be going for. That's one tip I wanted to show you, to share with you. Uh, another, another tip has to do with uh, this uh, round random island that uh, I had not thought of. So if you go to input geometry, there is this random per island and uh, what that is, uh, it's referring to this. So if you UV unwrap and I, an object, let me just use a different object here. Uh, let me just import images by planes uh, just to show you what I mean. So let's go to this UV layout. So say you have this mesh and uh, you have this character and uh, say you want to populate a scene uh, with a lot of these characters. Let me just position the center like that. But uh, you want each of these silhouettes to have a different, a slightly different uh, color. Uh, for example, let me just set up the materials really quickly here. So if I add a shader, uh, diffuse and then a shader trans transparent and I just use let me get rid of this just mix this so if you hold on control shift and uh, left drag from one node to the other it will just mix uh, the shaders for you uh, that's another tip for you there my mouse is uh, everything. okay so if I preview this <coughs> you can see we are not seeing anything just feed use the alpha Okay, this doesn't have an alpha, but I can just use this color directly to influence the factor here. And that should give me uh, this result here, which is great. So if, say, I wanted to populate this, uh, this space with a lot of these uh, guys, so I would just subdivide this and uh, subdivide this and uh, separate these into different faces so that I can move them individually. This is subdivided, which is something separate this. So, so I can move this there. Let me just populate this white load. Just select a bunch. Shift D, duplicate. Yeah, so let's say we had a scene like that. Yeah, but uh, we want a slight variation in color uh, for each of these elements. Uh, the usual or most, or how most people would approach this, uh, they would just 
apply a separate material for each of these individuals but uh, or each of these faces uh, which would take a lot of time and a lot of it is it, it would be a lot of work uh, but uh, if you don't want to do that uh, this option here let me just make sure this is recording this option here uh, under geometry random per island so the iron islands they are referring to is that if you unwrap this each of these faces is going to be a separate island so any face that is not connected let me show you here uh, show you give you an example on this Suzanne head here uh, you can see each face here or each group of face uh, that is connected so if you select any face and hit con and hit L any face is connected to that uh, that group is called an island and uh, that's what we are referring to here and uh, so you can randomize the color or you can get a shade of those yeah, a random color for each of uh, those islands so since we have a lot of faces here uh, that are individual islands uh, they should give us they should give us a random a shade for those islands let me just first preview this on site on on uh, <coughs> on uh, Suzanne head uh, so that you can see what I mean so let me just give you the same material as we don't even have to do that let me just uh, see this is called download so let me just call it assign this the same material so if I preview this unfortunately this only work, works in uh, EV it doesn't really work in sorry it doesn't work in EV it only works in cycles so you can see because these are separate islands each of these has been given random color uh, same to the Suzanne head uh, because uh, the eyes uh, this here is a separate island each of these are separate islands are uh, they also being given a separate uh, a, a different shade of color so now you can use this to affect uh, to give each of these a slight variation in color I uh, can see in if it doesn't really work because this is a EV preview and this is a cycles preview you can see so if you wanted to give these a slightly separate color you would just use a convert color ramp uh, to do that I first disable this so that it's not too distractive and uh, you can even make this this uh, effect more pronounced by adding a convert math node and changing this at something like power let's try multiply yeah multiply is also fine but I usually like to work with power because I guess it's more powerful or something like that you can see now and then now you can change this from linear to constant so that you can identify uh, the different colors you want uh, you can see from if we change this back to linear I can see we have different shades uh, that are uh, are all located on this gradient here so can I can try and sample them or and add different nodes uh, for them so that we can so that uh, when I uh, let me select these so that when I change to constant are they all are uh, broken up uh, like that and now if I wanted to affect those black areas or black cards I just select that and uh, give it a different color like that if I want to select those grad, uh, gray gray ones I just select that and let's change uh, the color like that I guess I we didn't really have any any ones <coughs> but, but uh, this uh, this Suzanne head had one uh, if you want to se select these I think uh, that uh, is around there give that so you can separate change uh, the colors to whatever you want and uh, then we can blend we can just fit this directly into the color ramp in the base uh, diffuse color now if I preview this yeah we get that that's how you would handle something uh, like that yeah, so the Suzanne head is not mapping correctly with this uh, transparency uh, because it 
And so it, for, I guess I would have to separate this and just remove uh, this transparent shader because it's, uh, it's not going to look very nicely. I actually did it the other way around. Should have selected the Susan head. And then just make sure that this is a separate material. You can see you now it looks just fine. Yeah, so that's another trick I wanted to show you. And uh, uh, because of this, you, you're not just limited to changing the color, but uh, say you wanted to change uh, the positioning of this, I guess I would have to create a different gradient for this. I guess uh, uh, should have known to change the colors right away, but uh, I could just add a convert, car ramp. And, uh, let's see, yeah, something like that. You can let everything continue like that. Say, say if I wanted to change the positioning of this uh, to coincide uh, with the random colors generated by the car ramp, and make sure this is recording, I can easily uh, add, uh, let's say, texture coordinate mapping uh, to this here, to this image here. Control T and uh, offset uh, the Z positioning. Uh, let me see this is which one okay so this here so if i wanted to give this a random z i'm not sure why you want you would want to use this but i think it can be useful in order for you to know but so if i wanted this to each of these to have a random uh, separate value what i would do is uh use this value because you can see this is giving us uh, a diff a random value here i can turn this from a color value or to a value value I just call it that and the way you do that uh, I want to feed and let me see it's a uh, it's a uh, the y value so I can just add a convert separate uh, I think it's called combine XYZ yeah and then fit that into the location vector so now I can control this value alone separately because uh, there's no way to feed this value directly. It will just control everything. You can see it's uh, controlling the x, uh, y, and z values, which is, which is not something we want. Maybe you would want that, but uh, in this case, we only want to separate to, com to control uh, the y's value. So I just feed this into the y value, and now we have randomized that. Yeah, it's not giving us the best results for this scenario, but I guess uh, this is just a, a workflow uh, presentation instead of uh, just a, a results-oriented uh, presentation. So, uh, and that again to make this more pronounced, I can just uh, play with this value and you can see how we are randomizing it. I guess this can work as a billboard, something to and uh, maybe instead of these silhouettes, you'd have words moving up and down something like that and uh, this I think is mapped to from 0 to 1 so that's why it uh, kind of caps caps out at a, a value of uh, a value, value around there but uh, you can uh, we can actually just change this to multiply So there's quite a lot you can do here. You can see. Yeah, because this is not repeating, we're not seeing the characters again. So yeah, that's how you handle that. And uh, yeah, again, as I said, uh, you're going to see, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, cycles, tutorials from now on. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.